Uh, tonight, I want you to turn with me over to Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20. And the text, it says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. I want to focus in on the statement that a faithful man shall abound with blessings. A simple definition of faithfulness is the ability for us to hold the course. Uh, faithfulness means to be able to maintain a certain level of direction. It means to have a sense of loyalty. Um, it means to be able to uh, stick with um, someone or something. Faithfulness. Our need to be faithful is important because our needs are met in direct proportion to our faithfulness to, to godly principles. Uh, let me just say that again. Our needs are met in direct proportion to our ability to be faithful to the principles of God. Now, most of us, uh, I probably could say all of us, uh, would expect God to be faithful. Uh, you know, we serve God, uh, we come to God and give our lives to the Lord, and you know, we, we expect God to, to answer our prayers, we expect God to heal our physical bodies, we expect God to provide the finances that we need to uh, meet our, our financial obligations. We just, you know, we have great expectations that we place on God. We expect God to save our, our children, to, to deliver our husbands and our, our spouses and our wives. And, uh, you know, we have this, these, these great expectations of God. We expect God to, to meet our needs. We expect God to be faithful. But oftentimes, I think we fail to realize that just like we expect God to be faithful to us, God expects us to be faithful to him. Now, God is faithful. Uh, the Bible declares that he's faithful. The Bible lets us know that the God that you and I serve is a faithful God. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keep a covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And so we know from, from the text that God is faithful. Not only is he faithful to us, but he's faithful to our families and on down the lineage if we serve him um, like we are supposed to serve him. But now, on the flip side of that, God expects us to be faithful. And so my question in that is, you know, just like we want to depend on God and we want to be able to count on God, I want to flip that and ask you tonight, can God depend on you? Are you faithful to God? Have you given that any thought? You know, we serve God and, you know, we, you know, we, we go about our everyday Christian walk and, you know, we have all these great expectations of uh, what God should do for us and for our families, but Sometimes I think we fail to stop and ask the same question to ourselves that we ask to God. And that is, you know, are we there for God when God needs us? When God needs to work through us to minister to others, are we available? When God needs us to release the finances that he blessed us with to do a work in the kingdom of God, our finance, our area of the kingdom of God, uh, do we release those finances? When God needs our time to intercede for a, 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 another brother or sister in Christ because they're looking for God to do something, God's looking for someone to stand in the gap to pray and to intercede, do we make ourselves available to be that intercessor that God can count on? Are we the one that's able to stand in the gap? Or are we the one that makes ourselves available to stand in the gap? And so, just like we expect God to be faithful to us, the question now is, are we faithful to God? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, the text says, Moreover, it is required in stewards 
that a man be found faithful. Now, a steward is a servant. We are servants of God. Whoever has given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are now uh, acknowledging that you are a servant of God. You are a steward of God. Your life is not your own. You were bought with a price. And so the text says it is required that a steward be found faithful. In Numbers chapter 12, verse 7, watch what the text says about Moses. The text says, my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house. The text says that Moses was faithful in everything he did towards God. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 35, look what the text says about Eli the priest when he failed, when he failed God. The text says, I will raise up a faithful priest that should do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. The Eli, the priest, he, he felt God. And God said, you know what? I'm going to raise up someone who's faithful, who's going to do what's on my heart. And then in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, the text says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Talking about the saints. When we are faithful unto death, there is a crown waiting for us. And so the text makes it very clear that not only uh, does God... Uh, expect us to be faithful that there are rewards for those of us who are faithful now God can only use us based on our faithfulness um, you know I, I've seen um, people come and go in ministry I have I, you know, been at this a while and I've seen people come and go and I've seen people that get started and they put their hands to the plow and things don't kind of work out the way they want them to work out or, you know, they, whatever reason, they, they back away, they stop, they give up, they quit. Or they just uh, decide, you know what, I don't feel led anymore. I don't feel led anymore to, to uh, teach the Bible study class. I don't feel led anymore to teach the teenagers. I, I'm tired. I need to take a, a sabbatical. I, I need to do this. I need to do that. I can't do it anymore because I got stuff on my job to do. All that's fine. All oh, that's fine, that's, that's, that's between you and, 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 and God, or them and God. God can only use us based on our faithfulness. The only way that God can use us, anoint us, and uh, use us to change lives is that we are faithful to the call, faithful to the ministry, faithful to the anointing that he's placed on our lives, faithful to the gifts that he has blessed us with, and we carry out our, our functions regardless of what other circumstances may come about in our lives. That's faithfulness. They stick with the course. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 19, the text says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a broken tooth in a foot out of joint. Now, most of us know what it's like to depend on someone uh, who's not faithful. Uh, you asked them to do something, they assured you they're going to do it, they had it taken care of, and so you trusted that person to, to do what they said they was going to do, to keep their word. You come back, find out, hey, they didn't do it. And then they come back and explain to you why they didn't do what they told you they were going to do. Now, if that's not the case, most of us knows what it's like to bite down on something and crack our tooth. We know the pain of that. Most of us have cracked our tooth biting into something and the pain that's associated with that is sometimes unbearable. This is, what, this is what this text is saying. The text is saying that there's a lot of pain that is caused by putting your faith into someone who's, who, who proves to be unfaithful. We see this a lot in marriages when you know, a lot of wives are disappointed, a lot of husbands are disappointed because they put their faith and their trust in another person, and that person turns around and, 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 and breaks uh, that trust by doing something outside of the, the, the covenant. Now, it causes a lot of pain. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, the text says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people will say, I'm faithful. I mean, if you were to probably do a survey and ask most folks in your household, they would say, I'm faithful. Go to the church and do a survey. Most people will say, I'm faithful to God. I'm faithful to his word. I'm, I'm, I'm faithful. 
But the text makes it very clear that most folks will proclaim their faithfulness. But the text goes on and says, but a faithful man who can find? The text says it's very hard to find someone who's truly faithful. Now here's the thing. I can say that I'm faithful. You can declare that you're faithful. But just because I say that I'm faithful or you proclaim you're faithful does not mean that we're faithful. We're only faithful after we pass the test. See, you can go and, 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 and tell someone, you know, I, I'm, I'm faithful. But until you pass the test with that person, you're not faithful. And God always, but always tests the hearts of men. He tests our hearts to see where we're going to be with him in terms of our relationship with him. That's why he says men look at the outward appearance, but God tests the heart. Now, faithfulness is the foundation to everything that you're going to build life upon. If you're going to build your marriage and your marriage is going to be strong, it can only be built on faithfulness. If you're going to build your business and that business is going to prosper, it can only be built on faithfulness. If you're going to establish your ministry, that ministry is going to uh, uh, be able to bless other uh, people. The only way that can happen is that ministry is built on faithfulness. You can only build on faithfulness. You cannot build on anything else but faithfulness if it's going to prosper. We can only build on faithfulness. We cannot build on unfaithfulness. You can't build a marriage on unfaithfulness. You can't build a family on unfaithfulness. You can't build a ministry on unfaithfulness. You can't build a business on unfaithfulness. You have to build on faithfulness. In this church, if, if I was not faithful to uh, my responsibility of teaching as a pastor, you would leave. If I showed up one Sunday, then the next Sunday I didn't show up and no one was there to teach. And, you know, I'm in and out. And you know, some Wednesdays, Wednesdays I teach and the next Wednesdays I don't teach because I don't feel like it. You, you wouldn't stay because you, you would say, you know what, there's no stability there. He's not faithful to the call. If you were to marry someone and, you know, one minute they, they all lovey-dovey and they love you and they, they're paying the bills, they're doing what they're supposed to do, then the next thing your lights are cut off. Then the next day they don't show up uh, for two days or the next thing you know, you know, they, they, you hear rumor that they're sleeping with somebody else. It's unfaithfulness. You cannot establish or you would not stay in that relationship long because you cannot build a relationship on faithfulness. You cannot build anything on unfaithfulness. Jesus says it like this in Luke chapter 16, verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? The point that Jesus is making is this. And that is you have to be able to master the level where you currently are before you go on to an, another level. And this is critical for most Christians because a lot of times as Christians, you know, we want a, another promotion on our jobs. We want to uh, get in front of people at the church. And, you know, we just have not been faithful where God's called us. We have not been faithful, you know, following the, the reports like we're supposed to. But now we want to be the one that writes the reports at the job. We have not been faithful in, you know, teaching uh, the children ministry. But now we want to get in front of the congregation and teach the adults. We have not been faithful at the level where we currently are, but yet we want to go to that next level. Now, we expect better positions but we're not faithful where we are currently on the level that we are currently. It's just like, you know, some people, you know, they want a house, but they have not been faithful in cleaning the apartment. Or they want a car, but they have not been faithful in, you know, taking care of, uh, you know, the, the bike. Or, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not reasonable to expect a, a, a promotion to that next level if you have not been faithful on the level in which you currently are at right now. And this is what hurts a lot of people in businesses. This is what hurts a lot of people in ministry. It hurts a lot of people in their relationships because we just don't understand the importance of consistency, the, the, the importance of staying the course. 
the importance of being loyal where you currently are until promotion comes. And see, here's the thing. Promotion comes from the Lord. The Bible makes it very clear over in the book of Psalms. God is the one that raises up and puts down. And he does that based on our hearts and our faithfulness towards him. He's the one that determines when that promotion comes. He's the one that determines when that contract comes. He's the one that determines when that door opens up for that, that bigger house. Now, you know, we can make things happen. But, you know, when the Lord blesses, he adds no sorrow with it. And so if you're looking for a blessing from the Lord with no sorrow added, then faithfulness is the word of the day. There has to be faithfulness. Now, he mentions two things here in this text. Jesus does when he talks about unrighteous mammon and he talks about true riches in verse 11. He says, in essence, if you have not, if you've been unrighteous, if you've been unfaithful in the unrighteous mammon, Talking about money is what Jesus is talking about here in this verse. He's talking about money. He says, who's going to treat you with the true riches? The true riches is the, the, uh, the anointing and the giftings of God. And what Jesus is saying here in essence is that if you, if, if God can't trust you with uh, uh, paper money, if he can't trust you with man-made money, how can he trust you with uh, his anointing? How can he trust you with the insight of, of knowledge and, and, and to get the wisdom and to get the knowledge and, and being able to, to pierce into the spirit realm and show you mysteries and, and show you things to come and show you things in the spirit. How can he trust you with spiritual things if you're not faithful with uh, man-made things? And, uh, this is a big one in the church. This is a big one in the church. You know, it's not scripturally correct to expect God to use you or to use us in any uh, capacity to minister life to his people and to, to, to do certain things if we are just not faithful. Because unfaithfulness causes damage. Unfaithfulness hurts people. Unfaithfulness causes um, um, a bad reputation. You know, it, you know, I just read in the paper uh, the other day, or not in the paper, but on the, on the news on the internet, where a, a, a pastor is being set down now because of his uh, inappropriate conduct uh, with one of the ladies in the congregation. Now, I don't mean to pick on him, but it's, it's a, a current illustration that I can just kind of pull up off the cuff. Uh, here, this gentleman is overseeing this mega ministry, but yet he's unfaithful to his wife and unfaithful to God and unfaithful to the people that he leads in his conduct. Now, whether or not he did it, that's for that to be decided. I'm just telling you what the news media has said. But if that is true, that is a good illustration of how we can, we can, we cannot understand or we don't understand the importance of faithfulness when it comes to our positions with God, our positions with our family, our position with our, our, our supervisors. Faithfulness is important. Not only is it important to God, it's important to uh, marriages, it's important to supervisors, it's important in life, it's important to your children. You know, a lot of fathers, you know, they promise things to their children and then they don't follow through. But then they don't understand why their children don't trust them. Then they don't understand why there's a wall that has been built up between them and their children of this big gulf between them that they don't understand, you know, what have I done? Well, what you have not done is kept your word. You have not established yourself as a faithful father to that child. And that child can only trust you to the level of the faithfulness in that relationship. Now, faithfulness, it gives us stability. Let me say that again. Faithfulness gives us stability. Um, this means that life circumstances should no longer control our decisions. If, if I'm faithful, if I say that I'm faithful, then life circumstances should no longer determine my decisions. 
my position in Christ as a, as a believer is supposed to overrule my circumstances. Let me say that again. My position in Christ as a child of God should overrule my uh, decision making, if you will. Uh, let me put it this way. As, as a believer, when things happen, when things come about, my position, my understanding of scripture, my understanding of God should overrule anything that comes at me from the outside in terms of circumstances, situations, and, and, and problems, if you will. Because I, am, I'm, I have determined myself faithful. In other words, if I say that I'm going to do something for God, no matter what happens, that promise is going to be carried out regardless. Because I've determined that as a child, my position as a child of God overrules any circumstances that may come into my life. Now, life happens. But I have determined myself to be faithful to do that which God's called me to do. Same thing in my marriage. Things happen, but I determine myself to be faithful as a husband regardless of what may happen in, in the relationship. I'm determining myself to be faithful as a father. So no matter what happens with, between myself and my children, it, it doesn't matter. I will remain faithful as a father to my children. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 35 says this, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or prayer or sword? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. What Paul is saying is that my love for Christ, my faithfulness to Christ, is going to overrule anything that may come my way, regardless of how painful it may be, or regardless of how um, uh, 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 it may work against me. Nothing's going to separate me from my love for Christ. Nothing's going to separate me from my faithfulness to my God. And then the second thing is this, and that is faithfulness is important because it's a protecting force. Faithfulness is a protecting force. Faithfulness is what protects your, your covenant with your, with your wife or your, or your husband. Faithfulness is what protects your, uh, your uh, relationship with your children. Faithfulness is what protects uh, you and your supervisor in terms of your responsibilities of performing your duties on your job. Faithfulness is a protecting force. See, without faithfulness, we're unprotected. See, without faithfulness, my wife is unprotected in the marriage. Without faithfulness, I'm unprotected uh, with my wife in the marriage. Without faithfulness, you're unprotected with me as your pastor. Without faithfulness, I'm unprotected with you as a, as a congregation in terms of your serving, in terms of your giving, in terms of... Um, your part in, in, in the vision. Faithfulness is a protecting force. Faithfulness protects us from wasting time. Understand, we are allotted a certain amount of time to get things done on this earth in terms of our purpose. And faithfulness protects us from wasting time. Your Bible says in Ephesians chapter five, verse 15, it takes us, look carefully then how you walk Live purposefully, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people. Verse 16, the text says, making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. What the text is saying is that now you, you need to protect your time and it's faithfulness now that keeps us from wasting time. A lot of people waste time because they're not faithful. But when you're faithful to that which you're called to do, it protects your time in terms of what you know you should be doing. Man, now, let me give you some, some keys to faithfulness in terms of a faithful lifestyle. So, if I'm determined to live a faithful lifestyle, which I am, 
and you should be, there's three things that we need to be looking at in terms of helping us maintain this faithful lifestyle. Psalms 119, verse 9, NIV translation, the text says, how can a young man keep his way pure by living according to your word? And so the first thing that we can um, uh, look at, or we should look at, in terms of keys to a, a faithful lifestyle is our commitment to God's standard. Our commitment to God's standard. And the text says, how can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to the word. When we make a decision to be faithful to God's standard, it helps us be faithful in other areas of our life. It helps us maintain a faithful lifestyle. The second way is to manage our thoughts. Manage our thoughts is key to a faithful lifestyle. James chapter one, verse 14, the text says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now this is important because a lot of times I don't think we understand that unfaithfulness is nothing more than the devil tempting us from doing what is right. That's all what unfaithfulness is. It's an enemy coming tempting us from doing what we know that we should do. Faithfulness has to be developed through the mind. It is developed through the mind. And so when an enemy comes to tempt you from being unfaithful in that which you have said you will be faithful to, you have to have the mindset to say, no, I'm not doing that. That will not happen. You have to have the mindset to resist the temptation of the enemy to bring you into that unfaithfulness as a person, or as an individual. And then the third thing is this, when it comes to maintaining a faithful lifestyle, and that is we have to be willing to live every area of our lives as unto the Lord, every area. I have to be willing to live every area of my life as unto the Lord, whether it's my finances, whether it's my position as a father, whether it's my position as a pastor, whether it's my position as a brother in Christ, whether it is my position as a, uh, let's say I'm ushering, whether you're ushering, whether you're singing in a choir, whether you are a deacon, whether you are an elder, uh, you have to make a decision that you're going to be faithful in every area of your life. Now, the Bible says this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. The text says, and whatsoever you do in the word or deed. Now, notice what it says. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. He is saying, whatever we decide to do in word or deed, we are to do it as unto the Lord. What does that mean? As a husband. I serve my wife as unto the Lord. As a father, I serve my children as unto the Lord. As a pastor, I serve my congregation to the best of my ability as unto the Lord. As a brother in Christ, I serve other brothers and sisters to the best of my ability as unto the Lord. Whatever you do, the text says, in word or deed, do it as unto the Lord. And so, what helps us live a, a lifestyle of faithfulness is that we live every area as unto the Lord. And so now I'm doing this, whatever I do in word or deed as unto the Lord. And so now my faithfulness is towards him, an audience of one. And so if I'm faithful unto him, I can be faithful unto anybody else that comes into my life or who are associated with me. Why? Because I am faithful to him first. And because I'm faithful to him first, that faithfulness now flows down into my marriage. It now flows down into my finances. It now flows down into my relationship with my children. It now flows down into my relationship to the congregation. It now flows down into the, my relationship with my neighbors. Whatever I do in word or deed, I do it as unto him, which allows me now to be faithful to everybody associated with me as if I'm being faithful unto God because I do it as unto him. Now, as I close out this teaching, I'm going to make a few statements here. And the first one is this. Don't let the role of others discourage you. 
when it comes to faithfulness. And this is a challenge for a lot of Christians because we look around and we see other people who are not faithful in what they are called to do. And we allow that to discourage us or we cause, or we allow that to, to, to affect us. Don't allow how other people conduct their lives affect how you conduct your life. Don't let other people influence you from your faithfulness. Don't let them discourage you. Don't look around and say, well, everybody's doing it because that's not true. Everybody's not doing it. Don't, don't say, well, that person did it, so you know, I'm, you know, what do you say? Ain't no sense me, you know, doing it, being faithful because, you know, ain't nobody else faithful. No, 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 no. That's the wrong mindset. Your audience is an audience of one, or it should be an audience of one, and that is the Lord himself. Don't look at what other people are doing or not doing, because in reality, and it, it, the truth is, it really is none of your business. It's none of my business, and it's none of your business what that person is doing or not doing. It just, it's just not in my lane, I stay in my lane. We should stay in our lane. What is our lane? Whatever we have promised God, whatever God has put on us to do, whatever we have committed to do, that's our lane. Make that happen. I, I can't worry about what's going on in that household. I can't worry about what's going on over there in that department. I can't worry about that, what's going on in that, in that marriage. I, I just, that's not my lane. My lane is whatever I committed myself to do for God. I do that. And as I stay focused to my commitment to God, I remain faithful. And as I remain faithful to him, everybody who is in contact with me or come in contact with me will experience that same faithfulness. Do not change your course of faithfulness for men. Do not look at what other people have said or done or how they live their life. Don't, don't do that. Do not change your course of faithfulness because of what you see, hear, or what you think, or what other people uh, do in response to you. Don't do that. I'm not faithful to my wife because she's faithful to me. I'm not faithful to my kids because they're faithful to me. I'm not faithful to my congregation because they're faithful to me. I'm faithful to my wife, I'm faithful to my kids, I'm faithful to my congregation because I'm faithful to God. I remain faithful to God. They have no role in it. They have no play in it. I, I have no control over them. I'm faithful to God because he's faithful to me. And he has a promise to those of us who remain faithful to him. And I'm going to read it as I close out. Psalms 101 verse 6 NIV translation. I love this translation. I love this verse in, about God's faithfulness towards us. And I promise you, if you can ever, ever allow yourself to get an understanding of faithfulness, and demonstrate that faithfulness towards God, you will, you, you, God would just blow your mind with his faithfulness towards you. you, you, you it would take you to a whole new level in terms of his love and commitment that he has towards us, his children, as we serve him and as we give our 100% of our of our lives to him it, it just it, it just it, it, it's on a whole nother level here but watch what the text says psalms 101 verse 6 niv translation my eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me he whose walk is blameless will minister to me god says a couple of things here he says his eyes are on the faithful he says those who are faithful will dwell with him he says, those who are faithful will minister to him. I love that. He says his eyes are on the faithful. God is watching the faithful. And he says the faithful will dwell with him. In other words, his presence will abide with the faithful. He says the faithful will minister to him. I love that. I love that. God's eyes are watching the faithful. You don't have to worry about the other people 
understand or acknowledge your faithfulness. You know, we're about if your spouse acknowledges your faithfulness, if your children acknowledge your faithfulness, if the, you know, church folks acknowledge your faithfulness, if your supervisor acknowledge your faithfulness. You know, some of us get all bent out of shape because our supervisors don't, we don't get acknowledgement and attaboys. Listen, 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 listen. The text says that the Lord, that God himself, his eyes are on the faithful. My God, my God. If there's one thing that should bless your heart, it should be that you can lay down at night, lay your head on your pillow at night, at the end of the day, out of a pure heart and say to yourself and say to your God, God, I, I, I'm not perfect, but I, I've done my best to be faithful to you today. I know I made mistakes, but out of the, 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 the pureness of my heart, I have tried to be faithful unto you today in every area of my life. Man, I tell you what, that's when you know you know what? God is faithful and his eyes are on the faithful. I want to challenge you tonight to um, get some thought to your faithfulness towards God. We expect God to be faithful to us. We expect God to answer our prayers. We expect God to heal our physical bodies. We expect God to save our children. We expect God to pay our bills and provide the provision that we need to get through our financial difficulties and rightfully so. And God, he, he, hey, he's faithful. Text lets us know that he's, he's a faithful God. But I want to challenge you to look also from God's perspective, and that is, are you faithful to him? Can he depend on you? Can God depend on you? Because whatever God's going to do on the earth, in terms of changing lives, in terms of blessing people, he has to do it through people. God's not going to rain money out of heaven. And so if he wants to get money into the hands of others who are doing his work, he has to use people to get that money to the, to the, to the, to the ministry. If he's going to uh, uh, give someone a, a word of encouragement, God's not going to speak out of heaven. He's going to use someone in the earth to speak a word of encouragement to that person who needs encouragement. Someone needs hands laid on them so they can feel the tangible, the tangible anointing of God. God is going to use someone in the earth to go to that brother or sister and say, listen, I'm going to pray for you and believe God to heal you. Believe God to transfer that anointing into you and, and, and for your, that infirmity to, 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 to leave your body. He's going to use somebody in the earth. God is looking to do a work. He's going to use people who are faithful. Okay, Doug, you're faithful to teach the message on Sunday and on Wednesday nights, but now I need somebody faithful to be there to help you set up. I need somebody there faithful to run the audio. I need somebody there faithful to teach the children ministry. I need somebody faithful to see to it that the sanctuary is clean. I need somebody faithful to be there to see, see to it that the grass is maintained and to see to it that people are, are welcome and see to it that people are, 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 are ministered to after you get to laying hands on them. I, I, I need other people to do that. Because I know that you can't teach, you can get off the stage, and then I can't lay hands and turn around and catch the person. I said, no, no, I'm going to need faithful people to help in the vision. This is how it works. This is how it works. Sometimes we can get so consumed with our own pain and live in our own lives that we forget that God wants to use us to help other people with their pain and they get through the struggles in their own lives. It says it's required stewards be found faithful. It's required. It's required God's children, his people be found faithful. That's faithful to us. And we, out of a pure heart, say we're faithful to him. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you this evening for this opportunity to minister the word. Father, we pray that something was said, Lord, that will help someone in their walk with you this evening.
thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Well, are you ready to worship the Lord in your giving? I want you to turn over to um, Psalms chapter 20, 128, the book of Psalms chapter 128. And I'm going to read out of uh, verses one and two. Now, there's several ways that you can give. The information is on the screen. And so as we get ready to um, honor God and worship him in our giving, giving is part of the worship service. It's a part of uh, us ministering to God. And so as we get ready to minister to God with our, our resources, I want to read these two uh, verses to you. And I want to encourage you to take a moment, ask the Lord what he would have you to do this evening. Uh, you know your needs. You know what you believe in God for. Uh, you know what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, you inquire of God, ask God, and whatever he instructs you to do, uh, be obedient, trust him. But I'm reading out of Psalms 128 verses one and verses two, the text says, and this is the NIV translation. The text says in verse one, bless are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Verse two, the text says, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. And that's a powerful verse. It says, for those of us who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways, the text says that blessings and prosperity are ours. Amen. God expects us to be blessed and he expects us to have prosperity. Those of us who fear him and walk in his ways. So get your offering, lift it up. Let's bless it and let's believe God to do something powerful in your life. Amen. And in your finances. Father, we thank you for these tithes and offerings. We thank you, Father God, for uh, the people of God. We thank you for their generous spirits. We thank you for their obedience to your voice. And Father, we thank you for every seed being released into your work this evening, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you will bless and multiply every seed sown 100 fold in this season, Father in Jesus name. And Father, we declare as a corporate body that every need that your people have are met. Every financial need, every personal need, every spiritual need, every emotional need. Father, we declare and decree their needs met in Jesus name. And Father, we thank you. And we declare as a corporate body that the needs of your house are met. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Listen, give some thought to the teaching tonight. Give some thought to it in your devotional time, uh, in your quiet time. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you in this area. You know, a lot of times we think we're faithful and we do our best to be faithful, but we have to open our hearts up to the Holy Spirit for him to reveal things to us and show us um, areas where we can improve. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a, a blessed week. We look forward to you coming out Sunday morning. Come out and visit us. Uh, let's worship together. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week.